I mean, someone that's just kind of like in our in our being, in our conscious, all the, like from through pop culture, video games, all the stuff that you have. A leader oh, in the industry. Thank you. I'm kind of geeking out. I don't know. I know. I love it. I'm so honored. <laughs> no, I'm honored. Are you kidding me? Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming all the way to Albuquerque. Hey, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, uh, to be here. It's so it's so weird to hear her voice. Like I can see her. This is me. And, and it's just, what it's, else do you want me to say? <laughs> I know. I just gonna I'm gonna do some a uh, couple questions. I know there's so many people that have questions. And yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll go to Q uh, Q and A. But I do definitely want to know your know, your breaking in story because I know there's a uh -huh. lot of people who want to get into this industry, and not not, not so much like this is how you do it. I want your story. How did you break it? Well, my story is is almost irrelevant today. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's different today than it was before. It's much more open today. Weirdly enough, there are more people coming in from diverse places into what we do. Um, I this was never my intention, um, <laughs> but I'm a big believer in surrendering to the universe or whatever one believes in, um, because I generally find that's a more intelligent option. Um, although you know, you get me on an idea and I'm not letting go of it. But I worked in a video production house next door to an audio studio when I was still in high school as I was a PA, which I recommend highly. Uh, I'll stop with the little takeaways in here for you guys as I go through the story. If you're going to be in front of the camera, work behind the camera. If you want, or, you know, behind the mic. If you want to be behind the mic or in front, behind the camera, work in front of it. You need to work on the other side so you understand what's going on and you can problem solve because that makes you much more of a commodity. So I worked at their production house, and there was an audio studio next door in Birmingham, Alabama. And they asked me to come over and do a commercial. They paid me 30 bucks. And I was like, wait, what? 30 bucks? Dude! And um, it was Birmingham, Alabama. We didn't have any agents. So these delightful men, Greg and Courtney, I uh, love you, Courtney, um, helped me make a demo and then redo it because this is another tip. When you make your first demo, make it at home on GarageBand or whatever you use, Twisted Wave, with your iPhone. Because in three months, you're gonna be like, oh my god, <laughs> that's horrible. Because the learning curve at the beginning is quite steep, you know? And you wanna wait until you made a demo and a few months later, you are not like dying when you hear it. You're like, okay, now I can go pay somebody a lot of money to do this, because I'm clearly in a different part of the learning curve. It's starting to flatten out a little bit. It's always going up. But still, you know, if you're not here, you're sort of more here. Um, so I took that demo and I cold called ad agencies. You know, in this market, you would take your demo and cold call websites. Cold call is like, you don't know them. You just like, hey, I do this. Can I hang out? <laughs> you know, or can I, well, and that's the thing too. You don't want to hang out. You want to be like, can I have two minutes of your time? Two minutes. And make sure your tape's not longer than two minutes, please. God, make sure it's not longer than that. <laughs> Mine is a minute and a half and I've got a, huge pile of different things that I do. Um, so, you now that being, maybe in that, my next one will be two minutes, I don't know. Anyway, you get the idea. So I cold called ad agencies, I put on a little suit, I was still a teenager, and like this door to door, hi, can I? It was mortifying, I thought I was gonna throw up. It was horrifyingly, terrifyingly scary. And I did it, and I built myself to a really good business in Birmingham, went to Atlanta, got my I auditioned for a movie and got it, and I was like, okay, this acting makes sense to me. So I moved to LA, and then I got to LA, and, <laughs> and as happens to LA, it's like, pfft, you know, you think you're good at something, welcome to LA. <laughs> so the takeaway there is if you live in a smaller market, stay in that smaller market if you want to do this, and get yourself some volume built up. Because when I finally, in LA, went, I'm just going to make a voice tape to get some cash coming in, you know, because the on-camera stuff was happening, but not enough to, you know, pay all my bills. I um, I went into that studio and the woman who produced and I I found out who the best person in the market was and I knew that I was you know in this part of the learning curve here and I had listened to enough of the national spots to go I know this I know I know this and she handed me eight diff very different commercials to do and it was just commercials that I did at the time and um, I was like okay got it and I was done in 45 minutes and she was like well, huh and she directed me and we messed around. I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, because that's the job. 
But because I'd done all the hours in the small market and I knew the job, I looked like some kind of genius, which I'm not. Um, but because I put in my time in a small market to really know and understand my job. When they say, you know, if that's a second and a half over, you need to cut a second and a half, great. I know how to do it again and do it faster without sounding like it's faster. Did you get that? Yeah, got it. Um, that was awesome. That sounded a little fast, but anyway. Um, the key there is the spaces in between. You'll figure that out. But, um, and in the meantime, I went to a fine arts high school. I studied acting. I started singing in rock and roll clubs when I was 15. And to avoid losing my voice on really hard gigs, I went to a classical opera teacher. And I have no intention of ever being an opera singer because my mom liked that and it was super embarrassing. Um, but that training saved my voice and serves me to this day. So the other pieces that I bumped into along the way that were helpful were improv training and things like that. And then in LA, I think I finished my tape in September. I got my first audition for a cartoon in October. I booked it and that ended up being my first game. And you know, a work ethic. I jumped into every class I could find with anybody teaching animation because I was not allowed to watch cartoons as a kid. I was like, what am I doing? And I just studied my face off and I did improv and I did everything that everybody recommended I do. I worked it like a business because that's what it is. If you want it to pay you money, you better be a freaking adult, you know? And um, there's all this emotional stuff too around acting. It's a very vulnerable profession. You're allowing other people to tell you, you're sort of, you feel like you're path is directed by other people's opinions, it's not. The trick to that is, if for anybody who wants to be in this profession, is the audition is the job. Um, you go there and that is the only job you're there to do. Because if you're trying to get a job, part of your attention is going to be on, how am I, how am I doing, how am I doing, how am I doing, and you've opened yourself up to all these people's opinions which may or may not be informed, and may or may not have any, probably don't have anything to do with you because the truth is, Little to nothing in this entire world is personal. Like, even the stuff you love. Even when I feel people's affection and love, I'm like, that's not about me. It's about that work I got to do. It's about something in them that got sparked by something much larger than all of us. It has nothing to do with me. But I welcome it, and I am so grateful, and I appreciate it, and I send it on to what I came from, and I appreciate it so much. Um, but it's not personal. So that when people are like, oh, you're crappy, you're like, I get it. You're, I'm not your flavor. Okay, let me go find the salad I belong in. Because <laughs> I'm a tangelo and you wanted a kiwi. You know, it's like, it's not personal. Mental health, I think is my point. Mental health is a huge piece of this business. It's a huge piece of this world because I'm gonna tell you, how, raise your hand if you are over 30. Raise your hand if you want to, if you're over 40. Okay, everybody who just raised their hand just now this may not apply to you. Every single other person in this room in this convention center, you are a branded generation. You have been born into a world run by corporations. You need to know this. And by the way, this is okay. This is my that was a good segue. Do it. <laughs> Take Tomorrow your time. morning Go ahead. at ten o'clock in the anime room, I am recording an episode of my podcast. And in that podcast, I sit down with you guys and we talk one on one. And it's about you and it's about adulting and money. Because I love money. I do, I really love it. It's an incredible symbol of how we're moving our energy in the world. It's an incredible place to work all your junk out. It's just a mirror. It doesn't mean anything about you. It's actually just a guidepost. And the first, I'm gonna give you all a little cheat ahead. The first thing I ask in this podcast for the person who sits in the hot seat with me is, what do you want? And it's shocking to me how many people no, it's not shocking. It's not shocking at all. I'm saddened ugh, by how many people don't know. Because you've never been allowed to think. You were born in this branded world with these corporations. And I love business, but I don't love this. Oh, control what you think so they can get your dollar. You know, so that's what we work on in the morning. Join me at 10 a.m. and let's start the revolution. <laughs> but it'll be in the anime room if anybody wants to come in the morning. It's, and we can do it with as few as four people, or as, I don't know, as many as this, but um, we can do that. So anyway. Man, easy. no, yeah. speak the truth, you know. And, and, and I just have lots of opinions. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so good. And, you know, talking about the business side of it all, and I've never heard someone going, oh, I went to opera class to 
to learn how to train my voice so I could save it because a lot of people don't understand how exhausting voice acting is and the grunts and the, all the stuff that they make it, especially for video games, if you gotta die and you get a shot and all that stuff. And so, but how do you feel about how the, the industry, the, the pay scale for voice acting? <laughs> I know I'm opening up a whole can, right? But not even that, how about the recognition? You don't see voice actors winning Oscars and come on, we've seen some amazing performances uh, from her and from others, well, and you, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, how do you feel about that? What would you like to see change in this industry? It's a great question. It's not one I give myself a lot of permission to spend time on because it leads to feelings that I don't enjoy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't, <laughs> no, wanna, no. I don't wanna bring everyone no, down. No, but it's an like, important, it's, it's okay, actually okay. really, because you guys are gonna drive the solution to this. I just realized I never finished defining what a branded generation is, but we'll get there tomorrow. Come tomorrow morning and find out more. Sorry, my mind's like, squirrel! That was just a teaser. Um, was a teaser. Squirrel! Uh, actually, come tomorrow morning and let's talk about the Matrix, because we live in the Matrix, and, I, and it's okay. You're not going to leave the Matrix, but wouldn't it be nice to know how to work it? Um, anyway, not that I have a secret, but we can find it together. I'm going. So this is part of the Matrix, actually. When we, uh, first I want to say that in, we we're talking about this today on Forged out there in another in a, uh, live stream. The, my peers in voice acting, you know, uh, everybody who's here, uh, Greg DeLisle, Tara Strong, Kari Walgren, you know, Phil Lamar, um, Kari Payton, like everybody. They are the most talented people I've ever met in my life, Deep Baker. Oh my God, the most talented, by the way, D, by the way, if you want to be a voice actor, there's a website that the generous, brilliant, yep. and incredible D. Bradley Baker wrote called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. Go there. <laughs> D's not into the revolution like I am, because he's normal and fabulous, but he's brilliant and generous, and that's an incredible resource. Um, they're the most incredibly gifted humans out there. I was... I've got a screenplay that a friend of mine wants to resurrect and cast, and I was like, all right, everybody except these three roles, it's all gonna be voice actors, because they're the most amazing people out there. You know, the benefit to our job is that we are anonymous. I, if, if I had done as many on-camera roles as I have voiceover, you know, cartoons and games and all, just cartoons alone, I couldn't go to the grocery store in peace. Right. And my son would have a very different life, which I wouldn't be a big fan of that, you know? Um, so I appreciate that part of it but there's a lot of dismissal of us. I've been replaced in a couple things because I asked for a little over scale. And I'm sorry, but my, my personal work ethic and creativity and willingness to bleed for anything that I'm working on and my soul goes into these projects and I believe it has a part, a small part, because I'm just part of a very big team in making it successful. And to have that dismissed like it doesn't matter sucks. But that's okay. You put a boundary in front of me, I'm gonna tear it down if I have to do it with my teeth. You know, that's all right, we will get there. We will get there, you know? And it's, it's feedback from you guys. It's you guys emailing, tweeting, speaking up, not buying, buying. When you vote with your dollars and you speak up with your mouth and your you know, keyboard, it matters and it makes a difference. So you are the engine that's going to drive the change, so. Yeah, there will be people that come after me that will get a lot more money than I did for the same work, that will have a lot more fame and stuff for the same work, but I'll always be the first. <laughs> <laughs> has, has it changed since you first got in to now? And it's how? changed in a million ways, oh, but really? it's it, good and bad. Um, it's, it's neat now that there are Kickstarters that I've been a part of, and like that if I'm involved, it helps to push it over the edge, or if you know, David Hayter's involved, or Mark Weir's right. involved, it helps to push that project, make that project get done. You know, which that's very exciting to me. And that says, look, these are bankable people, idiot. I don't know what you're thinking in the corporate tower up there, but I'm gonna blow you up. Um, so. <laughs> Tell your friends we're coming for them. <laughs> Sorry. Can't wait to see this in uh, uh, the comment section. But you know, those are people who are trying to preserve their jobs. Look, how many people out here feel like they're broker than their parents were and they think they're honest, it's the honest truth? Yeah, because you know why? It is. 
there's a whole reason for that. I, I did some speaking during the game strike about dealing with these corporations and the, the small group of people we were dealing with, the attorneys across the table. And this is very simply just part of the larger corporate war on the middle class. This is a statistic you need to know, not because you can individually change that monolith, but because, because of this, because a piranha could take down, okay, I know geographically it's not accurate, but could take down an elephant, right? I know they're on different continents, but whatever. Um, they could. How big's a piranha? How big's an elephant? We are the piranhas, and we will take this down one bite at a time. Here's the statistic that's relevant to you. The average CEO salary in the 1980s was 30 times employee wages. Today, anybody want to guess what that multiplier is today? 500 times employee wages. It's gone from 30 times employee wages to 500 times employee wages. Where'd that money go? That went into upper management's pocket, not to you. As actors, I mean, I've been the lead in a couple billion dollars worth of games. It hasn't gone into my pocket. It's gone into the CEO's pockets. And look, they're the CEOs, they're, well, I'm not sure. The devs, I think, deserve all of it. Yes. You know, the devs deserve it. The writers, for God's sake, yes. should be the stars of everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Because writers make the world go round. Without writers, we have nothing to do. They should be sitting up here in this chair, not, not me. You know, I should be second banana as I, you know, when you really look at, without them, we have nothing to do. Um, I mean, there's improv, but there's only so much of that you want to watch. You know, it's genius, but I mean, we all mark me all the time because um, he's a genius of it. But I, um, so these facts are important to know because you're going to vote with your dollar, you're going to make choices, and you just need to wake up and see the matrix and you'll head to a slightly different way. I mean, a giant boat, you bump that thing two degrees off course, it's going to end up somewhere completely different. That's all we have to do. You don't have to lift this whole thing by yourself. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was uh, loaded. <laughs> Every question's loaded with me. Haven't you figured no, that out? <laughs> and you know, I love it. I love it because I do so many panels and it's just yeah. so refreshing to hear truth. Can you guys agree with that? So, um, yes. The, the, the amount of characters that you have played, wow. Um, I guess my question is, how do you keep coming up with new voices for all these? Like, that's gotta be a challenge, right? What, it, what absolutely, is... it is, but it comes from the writing. It, mm. it, everything comes from the writing, right? It comes from the writing. I look at the character and I don't go to voice first. I go to who is this person, thing, insect, whatever I am, alien, um, and they're gonna have physical things that limit them, whether they're, they're bending what we understand as male and female or female. Um, are they are there physical affectations that rule a big mouth? Are they really tiny and wingy? You know, like what so that's gonna that's a number one selector right there. Number two is how do they what's their profession, background, etc. because that will take certain things off the table. Like if you're Princess Morbucks, you have no boundaries. And you can have a tantrum anytime you want. Your emotions are your weapon and you will use it whenever you need to, right? Daddy! You know? And um, if you're Commander Shepard, you're a soldier. You don't cry, you don't get upset, you are, and you stay cool. We were recording the last stuff from um, the goodbye stuff for, sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> I think you're okay with this Cover crowd. your ears. I think you're okay. There's still, I wanted to, I haven't some... finished three. Cover your ears. We were saying, uh, we were recording the goodbye stuff for uh, Garrus. And the thing about, a lot of people don't know about games is, um, it's very different from animation in that if we were doing an animated scene, we would be sharing the lines, right? In a game scene, it's all me in a game session, and it's four hours of a one-person show. You're, we would also be following the timeline. We'd be like, scene one, scene two, scene three. In a game, you're like, one, 427, 35, 48, boom, boom, boom. And you've, most of the time, 90% of the, 95% of the time, you've never seen the script before. So it's just what they call cold reading. You're like, and go, and go, and go, you know? And I, I get my acting 101 stuff together. Who am I? What do I want? Who am I talking to? What just happened right before? What's my? And then I add in, because I'm in a voiceover booth, what are my environmental uh, factors? Is it loud? Is it quiet? Is there beeping going on? Like, what's going on, you know? And um, so, oh God, I've lost my train of thought now. Hold on, I have to remember the question. 
Oh yeah, so I was doing the scene with Garris and I get to this point and, thank you, and um, I, I go to the line and I'm about to burst into tears. I couldn't speak. I was like, and I'm thinking, Shepard does not cry. <laughs> so I had to take a second and get my act together and, okay, I'm ready to say this. And then I said, and then I was done. And the best part was, I was recording with Caroline, who was directing, uh, Caroline Livingstone. Uh, she was directing uh, remote from Edmonton, and it's over Skype. And normally after a take, you hear her go, okay, uh, we'll take A there and B there. We're gonna take B, or we're gonna do it one more time, you know? And I said the line, and there was dead silence. And I was like, kill it? And so I was like, oh, maybe we lost Skype. And I heard, then I heard, hold on. <laughs> So, um, uh, how do I come up with character? It's just all these different elements. And then I've, I've also studied a lot. There's a great guy out there, Pat Fraley, who's amazing with the technical things. He schooled me on placement. Like, you can place a voice in your chest, or you can place a voice in your nose, you know? Or you can put it in your head, like, you always speak like this. You know, there's all those things. And then you've got pitch as well, and you've got, like, rhythm and different pacing of people. You know, all these different elements you can dial in. And of course, the easy one is dialect. I'm not from here, I'm from someone else, somewhere else, you know? Or maybe I've moved a lot and you don't really know where I'm from, you know, because I learned British English. So I say things like so, but I have these weird, you know, like whatever. So, so I just call modern moves a lot. <laughs> oh, you want moves a lot? I can do that. Yeah. Wow. And so would you say, um, Shepard, what's the hardest role you've done, or what would, what, what's the hardest role you've done up until now that? There were a couple that, well, the hardest things I do, the hardest thing I do is I'm stunt Dory. Um, whenever Ellen's too busy, I am Dory. When everything that's that not the crazy. movies, basically, I'm Dory. You know, just keep swimming. And that's really hard because she's so brilliant at that role. And it's just daunting to me. I'm like, oh my god, it's everything good, Ellen. You know, it's just, but I love that character so much, so much. And plus, she changed vocally from the first to the second. And um, I never, a little funny thing, I never sit for sessions. I hate sitting while I'm recording. I have to stand. But for Ellen, I have to sit. And I have to lean over and I have to breathe out all my air before I start because I guess that's how she does it, or that's how I get to Ellen. But anyway, that's difficult. Um, Shepard was just hard to say goodbye to, you know? That was the yeah. hardest thing in the world. I'm still like, How many years of your life is that? I don't even know, I, didn't, I don't count. You know? I don't okay. count numbers, because that right. means that I'm, I'm realizing that my life is going by, and I'm not ready for that. <laughs> um, um, but, let's see, what else? Electo in God of War was challenging for me, because she trades on her sexuality for power and control, and that uh, helped me. <laughs> uh, but Chris Zimmerman had faith in me, and uh, plus also, <laughs> Kratos is huge, yeah. so they have a tennis ball on a stick, so even if I'm, I'm right in front of TC and I'm talking to him, they, I'm still talking to the tennis ball on the stick, so uh. my is at the right angle, and I'm trying to seduce the tennis ball on the stick. <laughs> because it was motion capture, motion capture is a whole different thing, and I love motion capture so much. Yeah. Uh, talk about the, the process uh, part of your job, um, the differences between like a feature film mm -hmm. or mocap yep. and voice acting. What, what do you love the most out of those? I love them all. I mean, yeah. I really do. They're all fantastic in their own way. I mean, the best thing about being in a, in a booth is you're done in four hours and you did a whole episode. Woo! You know, I think I did Shameless uh, I don't know, a little while ago. And uh, I was like, I only got like a page, a couple pages to do. That's Quick, and I was like, oh, right, this is film. <laughs> I'm here all day, you know? Um, the, what is that? Com I wasn't complaining, I was just like, that's funny, that's such a difference in time. A lot of the film stuff I do is is with people I know, okay. because that's what I enjoy the most. So it has this sort of, I did a, a fun episode, Yuri Lowenthal and Tara Platt had this great show called Shelf Life. Yes. Anybody? Oh, so good. Yes. And I got to do an episode of that where I played Killerina. <laughs> this insane vampire, uh, not vampire, ballerina. Um, and uh, the best part was I was shooting with uh, Travis Willingham in one scene, and he was this big, you know, superhero outfit, and he's a big, big guy. And I, she was Russian, but, and that, that's very typical to go this way, and I thought, I'm not gonna do that. So 
so <laughs> I come out, I open my mouth for her first stick, and I go, Hazel, men. And he just like, <laughs> I did not expect that. Because I had on like this black swan makeup, and I was like in this skull shirt, you know, the skull, well, the skull tutu thing, and I was like all buffed out, like, you know, and I was like, hello. You know, <laughs> like, just dying. And then I was dying. So, I mean, I love shoots like that. And I work, Dave Hader uh, wrote and directed this movie called Wolves. It stars uh, uh, Jason Momoa and- It's Lisa. actually a great movie. Yeah. I actually really uh, had fun with that one. Did you? Yeah, yeah I yeah, loved yeah. it. I, and just, for me, I, I showed up on the set and you know, I was like, no, no! And I walked in the door, literally. And he's like, hurry up! And I'm like, ah! And everyone's like, who are these crazy fucking people? <laughs> and I was just like, ah! I was so happy. It was just so much fun. It was a great moment in that. We were shooting in a, uh, like a normal, like a normal, you know, suburban bedroom size room. So you got Lu Lucas in there, and I'm in there, and the dude who plays my husband, I'm so sorry, I can't remember his name, is there, and then the crew's in there with, you know, they got the fuzzy mics and the whole thing, and 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 then he's like, Dave's like, okay, so I want you to scream here, and I want you to, and I was like, really scream? He's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so he turns to the crew, he goes, you guys, you guys, she's gonna scream, and they're like, uh huh. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so he shoots me. I guess the moment when I scream, and they're like, <laughs> it was so great because I just slayed them all. And the next morning, I get there, and the sound guy goes, How's your voice? I'm like, It's great. How are your ears? <laughs> I love those projects where I work with my friends. That's like my favorite it's, thing. It's a lot more, well, like you said, in a voice booth, you're alone. And yeah. on a set, here you are with all your friends. Yeah, I mean. There's I, serious times, but there's times to. There enjoy. are, but there's also a zone. Okay, well, like, in a, and then, okay, so that's film and TV. And then in animation, and mocap is a funny beast because in mocap, your body is like a theater, like, you know, regional or, you know, home theater stuff. You do live theater. And, but your face has to be a little bit live theater, a little bit of that so you can really catch the stuff, but your voice has to be filmed straight, like feature film. It's a funny combination, just so that everything works right together. Um, and, but I do love, I love, I hate the mocap outfits, because no one looks good in them. Um, <laughs> baby trap. Um, and, uh, and the stunt girls always look amazing. But uh, and and the men, it's just like the physical discipline and fortitude. Is it's great. all like fit. It's, it's amazing. Body. It's amazing. It's impressive. T.J. Storm. I mean, come on. Um, he's he's a beautiful human being and incredible. And he taught me the Iron Man. We were doing Knack, this game Knack, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah, I had the whole thing in three inch heels. Oh. I'd sprint across the volume, jump off stuff. And, I like to scare them with my jumping off stuff. Made them all very nervous. Um, when TJ taught me the Iron Man landing, and I did it on the same side all day, and then I went home and I was like, oh, wow, that leg is really hurting. Um, so then you get to animation is just, I do have to say it has a special place in my heart because it's like a giant room of all the second grade cut-ups who've been brought together to do stuff. You know, I feel for the director because it's like, it's like hurting really crazy hopped up cats <laughs> it's, it's, and it's the fun like you're just doubled over the whole time your, your greatest challenge is don't screw up somebody else's line by going you know? it's it's so great and games are really cool in a game session you're doing you know a four hour one person show it's you the whole time and I just get on a roll because I'm plugging in all those acting basics you know who am I obviously am, I'm, I'm well seated into who I am and then what I want changes from scene to scene, who I'm talking to, and my environment changes from scene to scene, and all these things, and you have to come up with it like that, and you know, typically take anywhere from two to four goes out to market. That's it, you know? So um, sometimes take one, you just never know. But you don't have a lot of time, and there's something beautiful in that process where I completely disappear. And, and, and that's a really cool thing, and it's just, it's just the work. I don't know what happened, I don't know, okay? If they want me to repeat the way I just did a line, I'm like, can you play it back? I don't remember. Even though I just did it, I was completely in the now. And the now is such a beautiful place to be, so. And you've done so so many projects. Do, is, 
does it all mix together or do you have <laughs> some days or do you have like vivid memories of each and every one or is it just like oh I'm did vivid. i does anyone ever oh, i loved you in you know, you played Sonya in that Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I remember and that. You remember that? Okay. Yeah. Well, there so, are things where people will drop a box, yeah. and I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> Tell me your favorite moment. <laughs> See, now you know. Um, yeah, I will do that. Well, because there's only so much, you know, so many file boxes in here I can access. Um, yeah, that does happen, but there's a lot of it that I just love. Also, I don't hold on to it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I'm not identified with it in a way. I'm identified as the person that I am in my life. You know, I, I can't identify as my work because that's just a part of me. And I think I always set out, I set out to do a few things. I set out to, you know, make enough money to have security, some security and freedom, to do things that my peers really respected, and to have a well-rounded life, you know? And that was it. So that's kind of the track that I'm on. Okay. Yeah. So. I'm getting ready for the day. I have four kids. They're all nerds, Aww. you know, like myself. How old are they? I got 10, I got seven, I got four, and I got three. And so uh, we're all, we're get, you know, getting ready, and I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to go and uh, Jennifer Hale. And they're like, hey, ask her about Cinderella. And I said, I, and I said, well, well yeah, she, I know that. She's, but the question was, are you gonna do Cinderella and Wreck It Ralph too? If you can't talk about it, don't. I can't talk about anything. Okay, then I'll just shut it down there. And I have to stop now because okay. I just have to stop now. Oh yeah. So that never happened. Uh, okay. Uh, I so uh, I was going back to Commander Shepard. So. I I loved. I mean, that was yeah. my favorite thing. I think the thing, and I've told the story before, but we're all here now. Um, when I first went to LA and started auditioning for commercials, I would get scripts and they would have like, well, you're reading for woman two and girl four. Okay, what about announcer? They want a dude. Really? Can I read it anyway? I guess so. You don't have to send it. I wish you would, but, you know, and I did that I don't know how many times. And finally, bam, there came a day when I was literally on a ton of commercials, like tons and tons. And I was like, thank you. We broke that barrier. And now there's women everywhere on commercials. And it wasn't just me. There was a bunch of us doing it. Um, and then Commander Shepard comes along. And, then, you know, because of you guys, I'm, Fem Shep is on the box, you know, in Mass Effect 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, then, um, and then Bioware calls me and asks me to voice Krem. So we've got a transgender character out there, you know, yeah. And so I'm coming to realize that my favorite thing is breaking down barriers. And I don't care what they are. I don't care where they are. If I perceive them to be unfair, I am going to go after them. If I have, you know, as long as I've got the time and breath in my body, I'm going after them. So, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just like, the camera goes. <laughs> I think the camera, I think Disney cut the camera. <laughs> Perfect timing. Like, yeah. They, shot us they down. do have a ray pointed at me. That's why I cannot disclose. I can't talk about anything I work on anymore. I'm doing uh, yeah, all this cool all stuff in animation disclosure. and in um, games this year, and oh, there's some very cool things coming down the pike. What, like, because I moderate a lot of panels. One of the questions that I used to ask all the time that I don't ask no more is, so tell me about your future projects, because I get the same answer every single time. I wish I could. <laughs> I'll be shot down by an invisible ray. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I uh, last year I did uh, Mark Mir. Oh. And yeah, it was just awesome. And uh, he was telling me about the challenges of um, how, you know, and you know, obviously you can relate to this, all the different paths that Commander Shepard has to answer for. Yeah. What is that process like, and how do you keep it all? I, I can't even imagine how you do I treat it like Groundhog Day. I just do what's in front of me. I'm Dory. I'm like, oh, I don't know this line. Let's do that. Okay, what? Oh, okay. You know, I just show up where the director says, in the moment, period. You know, sometimes I'll be like, okay, where are we on the timeline? Oh, okay. You know, and I, then I'm reminded, oh, I haven't met this person before. This is the first time I've met them, or no, we're over here now where I've met them and had huge fights with them, and then we made up. Like, there's, those details are relevant in my human behavior in the moment. But I'm so used to it. I mean, my first game was Carmen Sandiego, 
Um, yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, which... I was used to the cartoon where we would have conversations and there was motivation and things. And, and then, I remember, they were like, I'd say the name of the flag, of every single country on the planet. And it was the flags. And I was like, I was like, why am I, okay, so what do I, and I'm trying to figure out what do I want? Why am I saying it? Who am I talking to? And they're like, just say it. And I was like, but, okay. Yeah. And after the second or third time, I was like, I need to just shut up and just say it. So I just kind of picked some ways to say it. And then I eventually figured out, I didn't quite get what we were doing, but after a couple of days, I was like, I think I, I think I understand I need to just shut up and just do what they're asking right now. Okay. And that's been my technique ever since. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to turn it over to you guys because um, we don't have much time with her. Yeah. And so I'm going to pick a question. I'm gonna run over, help this camera guy here. And then, uh, so you feel free to ask that question. I'll be back up. Okay. Go ahead. Hi. For uh, the Mass Effect uh, series, did you play the games? Because my real question is, let's do it. Okay, I suck at playing games. <laughs> <laughs> that is my dirty little secret. Um, I don't have time. I spend a lot of time doing them, and then I still need to go out and have a life and be a human being, so I have life human being experience to bring to my work. Um, and honestly, I'm one of those people where I heal up outside. I gotta go outside, or I will go cuckoo puffs. So I've played it a couple times when I was made to, and it makes me crazy because I just wanna go back and do it again and tweak this little thing that I didn't realize. <laughs> if I'd have known that was in that corner of the visual, I would have done it this way. But there's no way I can know that because I'm in, literally in a blank room with nothing in front of me. Okay, real question. In Mass Effect 1, who do you admire? Katie or Ashley? <laughs> Don't make me pick. <laughs> Yes, any other questions? Good, we're done. Uh, we'll go back there, and then here, and then there. Whew, okay. <laughs> Who is your favorite character to voice act and the one that you related to the most? My favorite character is, honestly, it's not a single character, it's the sheer variety that I have been able to do. That is my absolute favorite thing, is because don't put me in a box, or I'll punch you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. Um, and then I relate to all of them. You know, they all have, they all have my, I put my soul into, because I believe that we are all things. There's a Buddhist saying, you know, be, be nothing. And I was deeply offended by that in my 20s. And <laughs> now I completely embrace, so relieved and overjoyed that that phrase exists. It's be nothing and in being nothing you can be all things. We all feel everything. We have permission for ourselves to feel only a few, you know, a certain number of things, but the truth is we all feel everything. You know, we just filter it down. Like, if anybody's ever read a description of a mental illness, we're like, oh my God, that's me. You know? <laughs> it's because all those things exist in all of us. This just question is what volume are they turned up to? And I just go in and turn them up and down. <laughs> when I play Sedusa, I'm like, oh, look out, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that, uh, yes. I'm sure everyone wanted to ask this. I'm gonna do it for everyone. Can you say that you're Commander Shepard and this is your favorite expo in Arizona? Yes. Here we go. It's a recording device, it's ready. <clears throat> I'm Commander Shepard and this is my favorite expo on the Citadel. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And sometimes we do. Bioshock Infinite, Oliver and I got to record at the same time. Um, yeah, it was extraordinary. Um, Onimusha Baraden, we recorded together. Um, Metal Gear 4, uh, we would record in pairs or threes. Dave and I got to work together, which I, I've known David Hayter since a long time. 1995. And uh, he's Dave. <laughs> I love him so much. Um, and... Yeah, I love, I think it really raises the level. I mean, BioWare accommodated for that in a way that they could with Mass Effect 3. They have a system called Veda. It's a proprietary system where typically I would go in early to, to read my lines so I didn't benefit from it mostly. But if I was in and then Allie came in to record they'd, and we were having a scene together, they would play my lines in between her so she could actually act with me. I got the benefit of it in recording some of the ending stuff with um, Anderson. 
which was really amazeballs. It really, wow. I mean, you, you get something, you get a magic there that you can't, it's like the difference between a phone call and FaceTime. You know, you're like, oh, you're really not gone. You know, it's, it's nice. So, what other questions do we have? Yes. Uh, so I remember the first time I ever heard your voice was when I watched Swat Cats as a little girl. Oh my gosh! Um, but you know, since then you've been in all sorts of things, you know, Swat Cats, even Barb and the Martian, and then obviously the games, Bioware, and the other yeah. ones. Um, but just out of curiosity, these are, they, they range from so many genres. Do you have a particular favorite genre, Dick? Do you prefer sci-fi over like modern fantasy or anything? I really genuinely love them all. I think the thing that jazzes me up the most is anything that feels like Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> I loved that show so much. I mean, I always joke that, you know, if you could get me in a project where it's Battlestar Galactica, but I get to sing and ride a horse, there's my dream role. Right there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, switching sides, we'll go here and then there, behind and then there and then there. <laughs> So you just uh, talked about Battlestar Galactica, um, but my question is, uh, you know, we're all like big fans of stuff that you've done and stuff that you've been in. Like, are you a fan of like stuff that your friends have been in? Are you a fan of your own work? Like, what other kind of stuff do you just like nerd out about? You know, like we're all excited about you. What do you get? That's so about? funny. The stuff I nerd out about would put most of you to sleep. Um, <laughs> I nerd out about the evolution of us as a species on a level of being. I nerd out about the microbiome and um, mitochondria. <laughs> I nerd out about money uh, and real estate and uh, weird science facts that have to do with longevity. And yeah, I am a real nerd. Like, I'm like a kind of nerd. Yeah. But thanks for asking. But come tomorrow morning, we'll talk about money. Because I hope my nerddom and money will pay off for you. Because we all have to deal with it, right? Let's yes. not be oppressed by it. Okay, behind and then in front. Yes. Go. No, it's you looking. Don't look. The thing. The thing. The thing. Sure, you. Oh, me. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Mass Effect romance? Ah. Uh, <laughs> again, don't make me pick. <laughs> I... I really love the, of course, that Liara and I broke ground. I love that we pissed off Fox News. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, and hey, great, all respect to all points of view. Um, but equality is equality. And uh, I loved the ending Garrus stuff. I love the things, like there were so many aspects of all of it that I loved. I will say that recording romance stuff is absolutely mortifying. Um, and, uh, what? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> All right, here and then back there, and then we'll come up, come back around again. Yes, in seven. Uh, you mentioned the opera training is something that you use to protect your voice. Were there any other techniques like resident voice or lessic that you also use to protect your voice? No. Uh, yeah, Broadway belt training. Anything that puts the pressure here and makes it muscular, I have like I, my diaphragm is freakish. Um, <laughs> and then I also stay away from sugar and uh, things that are inflammatory. Because, you know, if you're acting in any form, whether it's vocal or not, or singing, you're making a living with your body. And if you think about it, you're having a life in your body, so I'm not gonna let those corporate leapers take away my quality of life. I will choose things that feed my quality of life, not what they're trying to sell me. So, yeah, most of the time. I mean, not to say I don't enjoy the bag of chips now and then, and the fries, I do, but it's the 80-20 thing, you know. Um, who was back there that I had pointed to? Yes, yes, okay. okay. Uh, I just found that you played Captain Angelica in World of Warcraft. Uh, it did? No, I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> Wait, is it out? Is it on IMDb? Okay, then I can say it. What's the auditioning process like with Blizzard? Are they kind of having a pool to go, hey, let's go get her? It's a little bit of both. Um, they, I'm, I'm in a pool, for sure, but I like to audition too, because I'm like, don't put me in a box. <laughs> don't do that. Um, it's both. Yeah, it's both. Yeah, I, and that's all I'm going to say right now. <laughs> mm, this is so hard to shut up about this stuff. Okay. Oh, you, uh, let's see, hands again, round of hands. There, and then back there with the glasses, and then N7. And then you. Okay, that's all I can hold in my headspace. Go. 
Besides, besides number 86 and Kids Next Door, what's it like being the voice of Cinderella in the Disney franchise? It's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. I, lo I auditioned for that in 1994 or 95, and I showed up. It was one of my first auditions, and I had been a jingle singer, and they had a cassette tape right there, and I just listened. To it. Nobody else was there at the time, so I just listened to it over and over and over, and I learned her voice like a song. I learned her melody, and I relate to her quite a bit. So. It was a very fun and, and delightfully simple thing for me, and I'm so honored that I get to continue to do her. For a long time, until 2011, I was Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, but then the chips got so good you could hear it was the same person, so they needed to divide them into two different bodies, and I was so happy they let me keep Cinderella. It was delightful. I mean, and I love Aurora, but awesome. yeah. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, God, who was my two glasses? I think was my, uh, yes, glasses, and then N7, and then over there. Oh my God, I have a memory. Go. Uh, so do you ever have any roles that you never really imagined being as big as they get? Like For Any of them. <laughs> no, seriously, I don't go, I've been on projects where they're like, we're spending a fortune, we're flying you here, we're feeding you this, we're shooting all that, it's taking all this time, it's so fancy, and it never sees the light of day. Wow. And then I've been in things where it's like, well, I don't know, we're just going to do this thing, and it's like, Whoosh. <laughs> oh my god, I mean, Mass Effect, I was like, okay, we're going to do a game, that's cool. Oh good, it was good, they were going to do another one. Oh, that's nice. Oh, we pissed some people off, that's cool. <laughs> you know, maybe we'll get to do three. Even when they tell me it's going to be three, I'm like, oh, we'll see. I've done cartoon series that were incredible that didn't go past, you know, two, one or two seasons because the toys didn't fly or the suits didn't like it or whatever. You know, and I still get people coming up saying, when are you going to do Hex Girls? You know, when is Hex Girls coming back? And yeah, so, thank you. And then it's N7 and then... You're so on. do you feel that your voice has changed or matured since you began your career? Absolutely. I didn't have access to this range. <laughs> <laughs> but I still have access to this one. And thank God. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you get older, the chords will fatten over time, the actual vocal chords. And if you keep singing and working them out, you can, I mean, the higher notes is just stretching them so that they sound thinner and higher and higher. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, definitely. Yeah, and you got to stay in shape. I have to work out. I have to sing. And my favorite workout is singing. I just get to sing, and I'm like, oh, I'm good. You have a CD, right? I'm working on it. I'm supposed oh, to go in in October. If work schedule will permit, I will be in the studio October 6th. We'll see. And we'll record my EP finally after a million years. And all these guys are going to buy it and support it. Oh, for sure. Thank you. You don't have to if you don't like it. It's fine. It's just my joy project. So thank you. Thank you, though. I'll take it. Um, yes. What was it like voicing Avatar Kyoshi and stepping into the world of Avatar? I wanted, was, I wanted to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> it was incredible. It was really, I mean, Andrea Romano directed that, and I was just like, Ooh, Andrea. She's, an, she's one of these people who can keep the kindergarten class in line without, without shutting it down. Like, we're all like, da, 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 and she, she opens her mouth, and you're like, <laughs> you know, um, it was phenomenal. It was such a beautiful world, and getting to do Junko, Junko Zane as well, was just amazing. Um, June, sorry, June the Bounty Hunter. Junko Zane was another part. June the Bounty Hunter um, was a blast as well. It was. I mean, it's just it's such a a beautiful series, and just God. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right, another round of hands. We got one here. One there and one there. That's our first, and then I'll come to the back in the next wave. Yes. So as a parent, does your son ever watch anything that you're ever in? He's like, oh, that's mom, or does he just not even notice? I never told him what I did until it <laughs> slipped out at dinner last year. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We were in Australia visiting some friends, and somebody mentioned something about a Guinness record, and my kid was like, what? what? And I was like, uh, it's just a thing. It's, it's just, I, I did a lot. It's not, it's nothing. He was like, what? And I was like, it's the, and he was like, and I think he's heard from kids at school. Because when he was like three, when he was in preschool, and there was a little girl at preschool whose parents were very into one of my, one of the cartoons I'd worked on, or one of the parents was. And every time she saw me, she didn't look at my kid, who was her age and her playmate. She looked at me. And I was like, this is not okay. This is about my child. This is not about me. So I never discussed it. Plus, being an actor is a really financially insecure profession often and is fraught with abuse and difficulty if you don't handle it right. And he's, listen, his dad is a really amazing, you know, he sings and plays guitar and writes songs just for the joy of it. And um, 
I sing and I write a bit and you know I act and um, he's going to be an artistic kid. <laughs> he's going to have it in him in spades if he wants it. So I very much, I also do a lot, I take my money from acting and I invest it in real estate. And now I'm running assets and running investments and shepherding my friend's retirement money over to where it's actually going to do something. And we'll talk about that tomorrow as well. Uh, 10 a.m. in the anime room. Um, and that stuff I showed him all day long. I was like, okay, here's numbers. This is an $8 million asset. This is how you value it. This is where, this is what I'm looking for. You know, it's like, add these numbers. He's like, okay, you know, shred these papers. Okay. Because I want to encourage him to be financially empowered. Because this is what my podcast is about, right? There's this myth on the planet that you're either creative or you're good with money, right? So as a result, people who are creative go, I'm not really good with money. So they don't have any money and no power. BS. And those who are creative and also good at business think I must be somehow less creative or less talented because I'm good with money. I better hide that. And so they are disempowered. Now think about this. What if we had a world where artistic, cool, interesting, creative, out of the box thinkers were really financially empowered? What would that world look like? That's why it's part of why I started my podcast. So that's what I want for him. So thank you for asking. Oh God, I've forgotten who's next. There you go. I wanted to ask about the No More Heroes 2 character, Alice from Twilight, how it was like to get into her headspace as like an assassin working with Suda 51. It's fun. It's really, I, I love those kind of characters. That character, Jennifer Mui um, from, um, oh my god, what show was that? What game was that? Ah, uh, look it up. Um, I love those characters because they do what I wish I could do. <laughs> it's just like, I'm done with you. <laughs> You're full of it. Goodbye. You know? I'm over it. I'm over it. Goodbye. You know, like, don't you wish you could? You know, of course, then my humanistic side kicks in. I'm like, they have a family. <laughs> it was really fun. Thank you. And then over here, we're... there you go. Or it probably hurt your voice the most. It's just because it's such a long running title. It's Cold Wars. Oh, yes. It's like working on such a long project that's six years going now. It's. Guild Wars is just a joy to work on. You know, I've got a couple characters on there, and it's been interesting to see the evolution vocally and character-wise of the Silvari character. And that team is just a joy, and that community is amazing. I love that community, and I just, ah, oh, I love it so much. Yeah, I, it's a privilege to be a part of that world. Yeah. Okay, that was three. Hands up in the back. I think that's what I promised. So we have there, and there, and there. Okay, one, two, three, go. Is there uh, any company that you like working for better than others, like Jim and go, oh, I love that place because it's got the best craft service that I can see. <laughs> <laughs> That's a question I can't answer for diplomatic reasons. No. Um, I, I love mocap. Any place I get to work on mocap is a joy. Um, I love the startups and the Kickstarters. I love the blizzards. I love... I mean, I love them all. I love the Biowares. I love uh, Lucas Art. I mean, it's just, yeah, I, they're really, and I always generally end up not eating most of the craft services because there's very few people that feed real food. So, yeah, they feed packaged stuff, and that's evil. Um, okay, one, my two is over here. Go, Elizabeth. Stand up. No more of this sitting down. Speak loud. we got six minutes to just to put that out there. Yes. Ha. Huh. Okay. This has been a life's work. Um, being an empath, and there are probably many of them in here, is very challenging. I think it's most challenging for dudes because it is changing in the last five years. I don't know if I'd say longer than that. Dudes are allowed two emotions, lust and anger, but they feel all of them, so they get channeled out through those two places. So going back to being an empath. Um, one of my best stories, I, I volunteer on a team and we pull horses out of brush fire areas. And we were on a fire in this wealthy neighborhood where they'd been told to evacuate for two days. But on day three, they're like, oh my God, I didn't get out, I'm sorry. You know, get out! And they all needed our help. And I'm standing there and I'm very busy. I'm very busy. I love this stuff. I'm like, okay, do this, do, go, go, go. And all of a sudden I look up and there's a woman in a suit. And she's standing there. And she's not moving. She's very stoic. But I look up and I'm about to burst into tears. I was like, what? But I knew enough. I, 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 for a long time, I just thought I was crazy. And then I was like, oh, I'm not crazy. I'm an empath, you know, I think. But I didn't want to own that because that sounds like a thing. Oh, what 
to be that presumptuous, but yes, it's true. It's I didn't make it happen. It's just an accident of DNA and, and you know the universe. And so I turned and I looked at her and I stuck my hands on her shoulders and I don't normally touch people in those situations. And I said, I need you to take a breath, please. And she took a breath and burst into tears. And I was dead calm. I was like, okay, what do you need? You know, <laughs> we got the horses out and we were fine. So that's an example of being, you know, suddenly you find yourself in a crowd of people and you're just overwhelmed and you're fog brained and you can't even think. It's because you're flooded with everybody else's energies. It's part of why I go outside. So I go outside. I have a thing called plexiglass for people who are not owning their stuff and projecting it all on you and telling you you're selfish and mean and all, you know, or just spewing at you. Um, empaths that goes in more readily. So just imagine, you ever been to a bank and seen that plexiglass they have? Just imagine that plexiglass between the two of you. Because they need to do that right now. That's how everybody's just trying to survive. Honest to God. Everyone is really just trying to survive. They really are doing their dead level best, even when you want to smack them upside the head. <laughs> they really are. And so they need to spew. So put that plexiglass in there so it doesn't bother you. Put a, you know, an imaginary envelope around yourself, a bubble, whatever you can, and get away from people. Go to trees, go to animals. These are my coping skills. You need to find the ones for you. The number one tool I would say is don't ever tell yourself you're crazy because you're not. You might be acting crazy, that's a different story. <laughs> but you're not, you're just really open and you gotta come, my son is very empathic and I, I watched it early on, I watched it, saw it happen in preschool and I walked over to him and this other kid was upset and then he just started to cry and I was like, okay, these aren't your feelings. What's, it? come back to you, what's happening to you? Where are your toes? Where are your feet? What color's the sky right now, okay? And just start there. Because that is really the only truths that are real in any given now. Let's come back to that. You know, what's that great thing? Whenever you're pissed off or depressed, you're in the past. Whenever you're anxious or fearful, you're in the future. If you're right here, it's all good. That's I mean, good. so far, <laughs> nothing's falling. We're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, oh God, I lost my number. There's three. Yes, I got it back. Yeah. Oh, Diablo 3 spoilers. I did. I did. When I voiced Leah in Diablo 3, I also got to voice Diablo. And uh, Thursday. Oh, no. On the day before, I had been doing um, recording for Sophia the First as Cinderella singing. And uh, the song was, was like, um, we could be true sisters and ever after friends. You know, very sweet, sweet. And then I'm in the studio that afternoon going, hey, I'm your soul. You know, and as I'm doing this, I'm hearing in my head, we could be true sisters. I'll eat your soul. <laughs> I love that. These people get it. You guys get it. It was so great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we have time for We have time for many, one more. How many more did you promise? Uh, I, I, I didn't promise yet. Oh, okay. So okay. you pick the time and you pick the people. No, we'll, we'll do uh, two more. Okay, time. two more. You pick. Oh, I pick? Yep. All right, let's see. Two it. more. All right, well, there you dressed up, so you deserve it. Okay. Everyone deserves it, but she just caught it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with voice acting Samus for the Metroid Prime series, did you have to, well, did they just keep the same uh, sounds you made from the first game and keep shuffling? I've only ever done the session for the first one, and whatever they've used mine, they probably recycled. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would love to do it. Email them and say we want Jennifer, because I sure would love to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Last question. Anyone who hasn't asked yet who would like to? Oh, there's okay. a hand up in the back. A very dark hand. Oh, okay. we're gonna do that. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, you gotta project through that thing. How is voice acting Kotor? Yeah. Ah. Fantastic. It was really great, actually. It was it was a while back, and it was the first game that I can recall where I was both evil, dark, and light. So I had already recorded all the light sessions, and I came back, and I was like, wait, now I'm this way? I was really confused. I was like, but that's not how this character is. Like, Trust me, it is. I was like, okay. And I learned that skill. Okay. And I just did, did what Dara said. I was like, okay. Thank you, Dara. Yeah. So... Before we go, I want to, everybody, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., in the anime room, my podcast, uh, Money and Adulting, it's about you. Come join me if you would like to. I would love to see you guys. So it's going to be a very quiet, kind of small thing. So 
Awesome. Well, you've been so generous with your time. I really appreciate everything that you said to us, speaking the truth and showing us uh, just that side of the, the industry. Thank you so much, every guy. Guys, I'll be on the floor. Come see me.